Okay, so you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to group by rows and or columns. Now, the way you do this depends on whether or not you have subtotals in your data. But I'll show you how to do this where you don't have subtotals, as in this example, and where you do have subtotals, like in this example. Okay, so we're going to group by rows and that'll be by branch. The first step is to select those rows that you want to include in the first group. And notice I selected the actual row numbers down the side there. Then you need to go to the data tab on your ribbon and in the outline group, you'll see a group button. So all you do is you click on that group button. And in our example, it's created a group for the first branch. Now, can you see this little minus sign here that's appeared in this gray area to the left of your spreadsheet? If you click on that little minus sign, it collapses the group. Now, hopefully you can see why it's important to have a subheading in a additional row above each group. When the group is collapsed, we can still see the subheading above that group. If you didn't have that subheading, I delete that row, when I collapse the group, I've got nothing on the sheet that indicates what that group contains. So if you don't have those subheadings, all you need to do is insert a new row above each group and give that group a meaningful subheading. Now we can go ahead and group the other branches, select those rows, on the data tab of your ribbon, click on the group button. We'll do the same for Oxford. Select the rows, click on the group button. Now, if I look at the top left here, I have two buttons, one and two. If I click on one, it collapses all the groups. And if I click on two, it expands all the groups. If I go back to one, and say I wanted to expand Chichester, I'd click on the second plus button, and it would expand the records for that particular group. Now we can do the same thing with columns. I want to group together the quarterly sales columns for each year. So initially I'll select these columns and notice when I do so, I'm selecting the columns by dragging across the letters at the top of the spreadsheet. And then I go to the data tab on my ribbon and I click on the group button. Do the same over here, and the same over here. So once again, I get little buttons at the top here, one and two. If I click on one, it collapses all the groups. If I click on two, it expands all the groups. If I'm in the collapse state for all groups, I can then expand an individual group, and it will show me the relevant columns. Now, hopefully you can see the value of these additional columns here that give us a heading for each of the column groups. So I can see pretty easily that the first group is for 2020 and the second group is for 2021. Now, if you want to clear your groupings for rows and columns, all you need to do is click in a cell somewhere on the sheet, then go to the drop down for ungroup and click clear outline. If you want to ungroup a particular group, I'll show you how to do that. I'll just group these branch rows again. So all you need to do is select the rows or the columns that you want to ungroup, and then you click on this ungroup button. Now, if you do have subtotals, the method for creating the groups is completely different, and it's actually much easier. Now, what I mean by subtotals is that for each group, so for example, for each branch, you have subtotals that add up the records within that group. So I've got subtotals for each column and subtotals for each row within the group. Now, if you have those subtotals in place, all you need to do is click somewhere in your sheet. It could be in your data or outside your data. And then you go to the drop down next to group. So this is still on the data tab and you select auto outline. So wherever you have subtotals, it will now create a group. So you can see if I collapse the rows, pressing this number one button, and now get a row for each group containing those subtotal calculations. If I press one up here, so that'll be grouping for columns, 
and now can only see the total revenue for each of these branches rather than the revenue for each individual quarter. And of course, I could expand a particular year or I could expand a particular branch. In the third scenario I want to look at, we want Excel to create the subtotals for us within our data. So initially what we're going to do is we're going to create a subtotal for each branch. And we want the subtotal to appear in each of these quarter columns for each of the years in our data. Now for this to work, the branches must be arranged in a particular order. You can see that all of the records for a particular branch are grouped together. And I've achieved that very simply by just sorting the data. If you're not sure how to sort data within a particular column, just right click in that column, go to sort, and then choose the sort order. So I've selected A to Z. Now, once you've got the correct sort order in place, all you need to do is click in a cell in your data, just one cell. On the data tab on your ribbon, in the outline group, click on the subtotal button. Now, the first thing you have to specify is which field you want the subtotals to be calculated for. So at the moment, it says each change in branch, which is actually what we want, but you could choose another column within your data. And then you need to specify what calculation you want to perform in the subtotals. By default, it's sum, but it could be one of these other calculations. We'll leave it as sum. Then you need to decide which columns you want the subtotals to appear in. Now, we want the subtotals to appear in each revenue column for each quarter. So we need to tick these quarter columns. If you want a grand total beneath your data, make sure this option is ticked and then click on OK. You can see what it's done. It's created a subtotal for each branch and that subtotal appears in each of the columns we've specified. Across the top here, I now have three buttons. So one gives me the grand total, two gives me the subtotal for each branch, and three expands all the groups. Now, when we create these subtotals, we can actually create them for more than one column. For example, within each branch, I want to create subtotals for each change in product group. Now, in order for this to work, the sort order has to be based on two columns. Let me show you how you would achieve that sort order. So you click somewhere in your data, you go to the data tab on your ribbon, and then you click on this sort button. Then you need to list the columns you want to base the sort on. And you start with the primary sort order. And for us, that's branch. And then you add a level, and you could say then by, and for us, that's product group. Click on OK. And you can see that within each branch, I'm now sorting by each product group. So once you have the sort order in place, and don't forget we already have subtotals for each change of branch, what you then do is click in a cell in your data, and then you go back to the subtotals button. Okay, so we then need to say for each change in product group, use the sum function to provide a subtotal in each of these columns, the same columns as we had ticked before. But we don't want to replace the current subtotals, we want to keep them. So we untick that option, click on OK. And then you can see that in addition to the branch totals, we now have product group totals. I also have four buttons across the top here. One gives me the grand totals, two gives me the subtotals for each branch, three gives me the subtotals for each branch, including the product group totals, and then four shows me all of the data. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.